Hello, welcome to the SC Playbook Podcast, proudly brought to you by Pat and George from Mortgage Choice SCW. We're here ahead of NRL Supercoach Round 24. I'm your host, Tim Williams. Joining me this week from Supercoach 365, Ryan Selvage, one of the sharpest minds to join this panel this season, mate. I've got to admit. Jeez. Low bar. If I could <laughs> Low say. bar. No, no, I can't Low come bar. in and say that. No, great to be here, mate. It's been a <laughs> couple of weeks since I was here. Can't come out firing off the bat like that. Um, no, pleasure to be here. Look. What have we got? Four weeks left to go, including this week. So, whips are cracking. Um, some interesting plays this week. Sid's first starts, I think, in, in captaincy choices. It's going to be all important. Mate, it is – it's a really fascinating week. We're going to have a real deep dive later on into the captaincy options because – you look at the odds of the matches this week and there are four or five games that are really lopsided and in those lopsided games there are key players the big three at the moment name that everyone's talking about are Nathan Cleary, Nico Hines and Sean Johnson who are all massive captaincy contenders along with Caelan Ponga they're like there are players there with the potential to go 200 plus this week and blokes around them you can't own all of them so if that happens and then one of their opposing players that you don't own goes sort of 50 or sub-50, yeah. we could see some big swings. I think it's getting easier to loop as well this time of year because most often, like on your bench, you've either started to nuff out the last couple of weeks. I know you hate nothing. Yeah, yeah. But I in, will not be looping anytime soon. But in, 26. but in saying that, those that who have, yep. now's the time of the season where you have set up your year so you can do that. So back end of the year, these big names that you've targeted your trades towards for the last two months essentially – um, you get that second chance. So something that I, I said to you before uh, we started recording, it's ironic that you've got me here today to talk captains because captains have what let me down the last two weeks. So oh. hopefully I'm here for as much to learn as, as anything yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure, mate. Hey, and uh, Fins and Tins, one of the, the better name sides in Supercoach, it's travelling pretty well. Doing all right. Yeah, last week a score um, uh, plus 1,400. I think it was about 1,430. So uh, a green arrow of about 500 spots. Uh, I think I'm around the 2,500th overall now. So last time I was here, I think I was top 1,000. So mm. it happens. Uh, you have that drop off uh, occasionally. But uh, green arrows last week and hopefully some more this week. Trades in the bank? Just two for now. Um, Better place than plenty. Could be could be zero. It's all, That's what I was saying as well. Like it's either at this point of the year... You want to get those high ceiling players, the guns, those big names. Um, yeah, for me, we'll talk trades at the back end. But if it, it, if I'm making trades this week, it's to get one big name back in. Uh, the Kuma Stallions. We've bounced back, mate. We've uh, 1442 last week, up into 5300 overall. So I've crunched the numbers. And the goal is to... I'm hunting the top 1% finish. So yeah. got a bit of a streak going, which two weeks ago looked in all sorts. But we're getting there. Top 1%, I believe, at the moment, or this year, will be finishing the top 1,550 teams. So there's a tick under 4,000 to make up in the last four weeks of footy. So work to do, but a chance. But that's why like this week probably more important than weeks prior because, like you say, those big names, they all have great fixtures. Uh, So your pod essentially this week could be your captain. Yeah. Um, you know, you think of those those big names and great fixtures, daytime footy, um, Caelan Ponga on a Sunday afternoon. How can you go past it? Well, you know, in your case, you might have to. I know you put your faith in him last week. You bought him at over a million dollars. <laughs> and you could be laying him this week. You could be sitting back on, on Sunday hoping he doesn't go well. He I'm not went, saying you will, but you could Yeah, be. he went like he scored his – he was on 30 after about 60 minutes in that game. I was so confident that he was going to get injured early in that game and I was just going to curse him for everyone. Then when he was on 30, I was 60 minutes, I thought, well, I've cursed him just in a different way. Then I just went whack, whack, whack. Yeah. And just went, thank Christ. So, oh, mate, for the second time in two weeks, I'll swallow my pride. Uh, thank you and shout out to Adam Derusi for steering me towards the light of Caelan Pong. Also with us this week, as always, doesn't get enough credit for the, uh, the quality produced in this show, but it's Matty the Waterboy. Matty. Timmy, Riser, lads, how are you? Good. Good, mate. How are you, more importantly? I'm great. I still have drink water and Ponga. I'll tell you what I did. I end up mo- getting rid of Munster, putting Ponga at six, and then getting, getting big trell in. So, yeah, yeah, you're always getting trelly mid in, weren't you? I, yeah, I had a lot of... um, Because I put that thing up on my story, just as a bit of a G up, just to annoy yourself and Guru Timmy. Succeeded. <laughs> yes, I'm sure it did. But a lot of people then... Gave me some uh, advice. I'll call it advice. It wasn't very nice. I was just like, <laughs> how the fuck don't you have Latrell in? So, 
yeah, I made that move, so it was good last week. A combination of loyal playbook followers and South Sydney Rabbitohs fans. <laughs> Uh, mate, Scotty Drinkwater, who you were boasting about, is on the buy this week. Holding or selling? Top dollar. What do you think of, mate? And I know you haven't thought about it, so that's why it's even better. <laughs> I'm, on the, I'm on the spot right now. Nah, he's done me so well all year. I know big riser over there is a big Drinkwater fan. I think I think uh, riser is actually a lot of the reason I got him in so early um, because of another group chat that we were in. Uh, loves Drinkwater a lot. A lot of, lot of memes made about Drinkwater and, and riser. I think it's... Is it draft first pick? I drafted it? him, yeah. I drafted him pick 10, like, overall. So I was I was pretty big on him. Like, I just – I looked at his involvements for the Cowboys last mm. year. He was essentially a 5A through war number one. Like, their whole attack is about, okay, get here so Drinky can do yeah. his thing. So uh, I liked what I saw. It's funny because I've obviously convinced Matty to buy him. I've never owned him this season. I was, going, I was going to yeah. be my next question. No, I mean, I, again, like, my mind flashes back. I think I sat here probably two months ago now and I said that – Drink water to Latrell would be a popular trade this time of year, and yeah, it's I've I haven't gone drink water to Latrell. I, I've gone to Latrell at uh, you know a couple of weeks back, but yeah, I would have loved to have backed my gut first time and, and got in drink. I'd probably be yeah well entrenched in that top one thousand. You would be right in the hunt if you had the drinky. Alas, here we are, mate. Uh, now, what are we up to? We're up to today's show. Key takes from Teamless Tuesday. Topic, the captaincy deep dive. Five superstars, all with gun matchups. I think it will be one of the more... It, it, sorry, it may end up being one of the more season-defining decisions, uh, particularly for head-to-head players, being week two of head-to-head finals. So, hot topics of the week. Brian To'o, the most brought-in player of the week. People are also flocking to bring back Joey Marner, who they sold last week. Yeah, Around right. 24 trades, of course, our skippers and some listener questions to wrap it up. The SC Playbook Unlimited Group, $1,000 up for grabs. If it is, is a subscriber that wins it, you will win a grand. If it is not a subscriber that wins it, we'll go 500 to the winner and 500 to the top-ranked subscriber to split that one up. Now, mate. oh, Is that, it too late to subscribe? It's not too late to subscribe. However, the subscriber aspect of the prize has been shut off right. mid-season just for any any... People yeah, who, yeah, who've yeah. just come to grab the extra 500 bucks and they weren't there from the start. So, no. mate, raging pole, James, still in third overall. I feel he's been there since about round three. And, uh, yeah, he's third. Here come the Bears, Glenn in sixth. And short-priced fave Ben in ninth overall is firming, as his name suggests. I'll tell you who else is firming, the raging pole. I'll tell yeah, you the what. The raging uh, pole. Third, was that third overall you yeah, were saying? he's third overall. How are you feeling this time of year? And you would probably know better than anyone else. Um, are you nervous? Like, are you genuinely nervous, Teamless Tuesday, that your players get named? I I took the approach, and I always do with Supercoach, and when I was sitting around that, the top sort of 5'10", that, you know... You can't get upset about Supercoach. Yeah. There's going to be injuries. People are going to get ruled out, suspensions. Things won't go right. So I basically got through to the final round, and, and even when I, I think I was top three for four or five or so rounds to finish the season, I wasn't nervous the whole time. Right. I got damn excited when things went well, don't get yeah, me wrong. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't until that final week when I went, all right, I'm, mm. I'm a show here. Yeah. And that last weekend was a tough watch. I'm sure. Uh, to those guys, no, they're, they're doing very well. Um, the money in the bank, uh, 15 million plus, like you see some teams with 16 million plus mm. and that's like their overall ranks might not be quite as high as those guys, but you know if they they do have trades remaining, like yeah. very quickly you can make up literally thousands of ranks. Yeah. Exciting finish to the year, mate. A month to go. Team list Tuesday. Not a heap of largely Supercoach relevant stuff, but certainly some things that will put people out a little bit. Mate, the big one is Tino for Sua Malawi, back from a three-week suspension. He's the seventh most traded in player this week. No Mo Fodawaka for the Titans, yep. who is suspended. 808k. Is he a bloke that you've got your eye on uh, this week or for the run home? Yeah, most... <coughs> excuse me, a bit of a testy pop there. Most certainly. <laughs> I haven't had one of those in about a decade. I haven't had one in about two hours. Yeah, um, yeah, most certainly. Look, cut out of the bag. I've got two trades left, and like I sort of alluded to, Tino would be the one that I'd be looking to get back in. Mm. To do that, I'd have to sell Johnny Bateman and Christian Welch, who are... Providing depth at 2RF and, and FRF respectively, but Tino does that via his duel anyway. For me, it's not so much about not having Tino this week as it would be if shit hits the fan, which we know it can very, very quickly. Suddenly I'm, I'm playing from behind, which is something I haven't had to do a whole heap of this year. 
And I don't know if I want to yeah. be doing it, you know, starting round 24. It'll be a very aggressive, it'll be an aggressive move for a front row. But, mate, we'll get to it. We'll talk trades a bit more later. I've got a few thoughts on that, but we'll get there. Charles Nickel Cookstad out. He obviously suffered an early concussion that game. We sat here last week in a big debate about Dallin versus Charles. Who was the better buy? Yep. Charles was massively owned. Dallin, not so much. It's one of them daggers that it's super coach, isn't it? It happens. It's, it's brutal, though, because yep. on top of that, it's his third concussion this season. I would be probably pretty surprised if he played next week as mm-hmm. well. And I, I saw the great man NRL Physio put up a video from his podcast today and it was saying that he referred to about three or four examples of the last week that had three concussions in a season and it actually ended their season. Right. I'm not suggesting this will happen with Charles. I wouldn't have a freaking clue. But from a Supercoach perspective, more than anything, multiple weeks could be every chance. Yeah, that's the thing. Like You, you have to prioritise your health above everything else mm. at what point is one one too many you know so um look firstly to chance hope he's hope he's all right we'd love to see him back playing finals footy yeah. in a, you know in a month's time or thereabouts um that question though dwz or cnk that was the one last week it was a genuine coin flip i think dallin was 660 and chance was 680k so yeah. it was each of one like take your pick and for me i had to answer that question myself i got lucky i went to dallin um, and purely it was because of his ownership. He was, I think he was around 6% owned. Chance was 25%. So I'm chasing rank. I just had to go the pod play. And yeah, as unfortunate as it is for Chance, I've probably come out on top this week. Yeah, I, I was initially going, I was tossing up and I was leaning towards Dallin and due to the ownership, I was probably going to go to him. But my arm was twisting on the podcast and then when I ended up going with Ponga, I'd put a line through that move. Yep. Mate, these... At the end of the day, no matter how well you can set your side up, you need some things to go your way. In our case, it did last week. Yeah. For plenty of others, it didn't. So um, I suppose the question now is for, for the plethora of owners out there, head-to-head players. We'll start with them because it's very different for both. I think if you've got him in head-to-head and you're in week two of the finals, you've got, you have to sell him. What about the overall view? And, and it'll obviously be trade-dependent, but overall, would you be looking to sell or hold? How much cash did he lose last week? Do you know? Like, can you go if you can go straight swap from Chance to Dallin mm. in one trade? You could make a case for that. Um, I know he only got about It'd fifteen be last he week. He should be able to. Yeah, he, I, I, he dropped thirty-eight k to six fifty-eight. So, yeah, I so Dallin, Dallin's seven k more. So, you assuming you've got seven k in the bank plus one trade, you could go that way. Is it sideways? I don't think it is because I'd still rather a playing player this time of year than someone who's not. Yep. Do you think? That, I agree, I'd be trading, especially that much value. How much of an impact does no chance have, do you think, on Dallin with Tenny Lesniak? Probably to a lesser degree, Sean Johnson. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, he's replaced at fullback by Torpiki, who was outstanding. Torpiki, Torpiki, I'll get that one right. And, uh, yeah, who time. was really good coming on last week from 18th yeah. man. Impact on Dallin is the main one. I'd have to go back. I don't know off the yeah. top of my head, but you'd have to go back and see, okay, in Dallas tries, how many times did Sean Johnson pass in the ball? How many a times did CNK heap. pass in the ball? Yeah. We, we did on, on the show last week. I'm glad you're tuning in to us, mate. Happy days. Um, <laughs> no, but we, we, we did the, the correlation between Chans and Dallin going large this season. Right. Every time that yeah. Dallin went big, Chans just about matched him. But that's not to say until Peaky can't do similar. And it's scary, though, as well, because... You look back just as recent as last week, like Dallin scores a try that he probably shouldn't have scored off that mm. Johnson kick, right? So you take that out. Um, and and Chans was out of the game for, what, 60, 70-odd minutes? So you can even say in that small sample size of 70 minutes, yeah, the yeah. Chans did have an impact on Dallin, perhaps not being as impactful. That People, was the Titans with the player down as well. Yeah. So, I mean, I brought in Dallin last week thinking he'd probably turn up. Um, maybe that's being a little bit greedy, but... Score a 67 with a lucky try, you can say. So otherwise 50, you'd, you'd probably take that as par. But yeah, we'll, we'll probably see this weekend, of course. I'm intrigued now because Torpiki, and again, if I'm screwing that up, which I likely am, please let us know in the comments on YouTube. I'm just going to, mate, I'm, I'll throw, while I'm looking that up, mm-hmm. we'll throw to the next one and we'll go with... Uh, so Ben Trebojevic starting on the edge for Manly. You probably know real significance there. The spy did own him at one point and then he did his hammy. So if you are still hanging on to, to Burbo, good for depth there. 
No Isaac Tungo for Penrith again. Anyone that's held on to him, so unlucky. Because he got named last week and didn't play. You thought he'd be in this week. Zach Hosking went to centre, played yep. right centre. Stephen Crichton went to left centre. As a Brian Toro owner, I was thinking, oh dear. Mate, he got better ball from him than he did Stephen Crichton. So I'm not upset about this one. That's probably the best ball he's got in his NRL career. <laughs> Seriously, because I think he's always, for the most part of his career, I know there was a period there where um, he was a left side outside of... Uh, Burton, but mm. really, the, the, you see that Crichton to- or combination. They, they've sort of swiveled sides as they've needed to. But yeah, I didn't know Hosking had that in him. To be fair, like um, under pressure, those passes to hit Toto. Yeah, I can see why Toto's um, one of the most. Did you say he's the most traded in player he this is week? As it stands, yeah. yeah, yeah. So again, that's someone who I was lucky enough to get on a fortnight ago or three weeks ago now when they had the Bulldogs out there at um, Penrith Park. So. Yeah, we watched it with interest on uh, mm. Brian Toto this week. So, uh, Torpy, he's only played the one 80-minute game this season. was in round three, and Dallin did not play. So, yeah, mate, we're going time, off 70 minutes, 65 <laughs> minutes last week. So, do as you please. Mate, moving on to Ronaldo Mulitalo, back for the Cronulla Sharks. Now, he was named last week. Mwene Hiroti is out. Harati was actually surprisingly highly purchased this week. This will obviously change that. Mulitalo wasn't laid out with a jaw last week. He comes back this week on the left edge for the Sharkies, coming up yeah. against the really weak defensive right edge of the Titans. We know he's been a bit of an enigma of late for, for owners the last couple of months, but very playable in 17s this week. I think potentially even over some decent players. This is the point around sit versus starts because most people are going to have probably four genuine centre wing mm. options at average 70 and you've got that decision to make. Am I going to run Mulatalo, who in his last three games has scored 19, 9 and 54? <laughs> so there was a significant drop off the week when a lot of people bought him um, after that Dragons game. He scored an 87 in round 18 and since that point he's just let a whole heap of people down. Um, he's lost what looks to be around 200k since people would have brought him in. So, uh, gets a good game this week. Back at home, 22 games at Shark Park for 23 tries by my count. Jeez. So, you can pencil him down for a try. Yeah, Sharks will be humming again. I think they'll get a lot of confidence out of that win over the Rabbitohs last week. Clip that one up for socials. You can pencil him down for a try. Pencil him down. If I play him and he doesn't get that try, mate, there we... Put him down for two. <laughs> oh. Oh, put him down for two and a starter for the Cooma Stallions. Uh, I'm I'm tempted to play him. Uh, there'll be a few decisions to be made this week, but I love the matchup. The Shark has found a bit of form against the Bunnies last week, and I think he's a sneaky one. So I do have a few decent options to play there. So we'll see. Brendan Piakura has been benched by the Broncos, which really surprised me. Jordan Ricky starting, Ricky and Capewell the starting edges. Look, this could change come to game day. Piakura, look, he wasn't going to play in my 17 anyway, but I was eyeing off. I think he's got a negative break even or be there about. So he'll still have another good price rise this week into the Broncos buy. I was thinking he'd be, he will still be a nice trade in a couple of weeks' time, but not as much as we probably anticipated as it stands. But, mate, he's been in red-hot form. He has, and he seems to have grown a leg every week that he's, I guess, found his place in this Broncos team a little bit more. Mm. Um, don't forget last week they had to do it without Adam Reynolds. So... Uh, yeah, to have Ricky back, you know, he's obviously the, the starting edge in that team. But, yeah, I, I think it's the timing of it all has probably worked out not too bad for you. Like, the yeah. buy will come at a nice time where you can sell him off for, uh, in maybe a, you know, a two-trade move to someone of much more significance. Yeah, negative 23 break even this week. So, provided he takes the field, which can't imagine why he wouldn't, get a decent price rise and, and see what we can do uh, with that one. Now, mate... Meant to do it at the top of the show, but for whatever reason, I did not. Don't know where the notes were. Uh, mate, a shout out to to the great folk at NRL Supercoach Talk. The the pioneers, to my knowledge, of Supercoach material. Started up a website. Oh, might have been like 08 or 09, maybe a little bit after that. Uh, terrific bunch of fellas. They are wrapping up at the end of this season. Great group of contributors, website, podcast. Yep. Great social media content. Absolute stalwart of the Supercoach community, the foundation of the Supercoach community for, for over a decade. Uh, they'll be missed, mate. They walked so you could run, Tim. They, they did. Uh, I, no. I, I, owe, I owe a lot to these boys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it goes without saying as well, like, it's such a thankless job. But, uh, not, not a job. It's a hobby, right? Mm. At, at times, you know, you've obviously made it into uh, your bread. But, you know, it's something as simple as a late mail tweet, you know, that you and I 
rely upon and, yeah. and so do thousands of uh, others out there so uh, it's all involved uh, congratulations on a, a massive knock it's uh, yeah it's been a phenomenal ride I, I hope you uh, enjoy what's next for whatever you uh, yeah whatever you get up to in next season and beyond yeah they put in a ton of hard yards over the years in their spare time I know a lot of them got families kids all that sort of thing so yeah. to punch out what they have done we're, we're very grateful for that so good on uh, those fellas for that one now I've no idea what I was up to no I do teamless Tuesday <laughs> Diane Arcee, starting centre for the Parramatta Eels. Look, they've got around 27 by, and he's already uh, pretty expensive. But I'm interested to see how he goes at centre, because uh, he has spent a bit of time there in New Wales Cup this season. Ryan Madison has been benched for Andrew Davey. Parramatta play relatively early in the round. Keep an eye on this one, because, look, he played terrific last week, Maddo, and played the full 80 minutes, started on the edge. So I think there's every chance he does start, but not ideal for Maddo owners. The big one that's come out of it is the Rabbitohs and the Dragons, Tyrone Munro. Mm -hmm. Now, he was only okay last weekend, and that was off the back of the Bunnies not... So they underperformed. Tyrone Munro, 18th man. Tane Milne comes back into the side. He was very playable this week. Yeah, and it's a shame because, you know, if those half chances stick, you know, we're, we're sitting here having a very different conversation this week. And by that, you know, second last one or that last drop, you just knew it was coming. You saw Manu Vadavai, I remember, had a night like that at, was it the old Pertec Stadium at Parramatta where yeah. he couldn't catch a cold? He, uh, one um, of the all-time barriers from Manu. He'll learn from this, the, the kid. And you can see, you know, he's got the talent there. Um, but in terms of Supercoach, yeah, it's a shame. I played him last week. Um, he was actually a reason why I didn't loop last week. Mm -hmm. So not because I thought he'd have a bad score. I didn't want to not be able to play my reserve yeah. on him. So I ended up going with Latrell, and then that's the thing, right? If he catches one or two more of those balls, he probably scores. Latrell ends up on 120. Yeah. So uh, double-edged sword for me. Uh, Tane Milne comes back. It's a good game against the Dragons, I feel, down that right side. Um, we've seen that he has scored tries on occasions when he's come in and, and done a job. So not that many are holding Milne, but in terms of Latrell's output specifically, will it impact him? I, I don't think it will. Yeah. Uh, also at the Barneys, still no Totola, Sele, Burge has been suspended. Jai Arrow has been named. He's got back spasms there, so could have an impact on that side, which we'll get to shortly. Jack Bird, Zach Lomax out for the Dragons. Blow for particularly Zach Lomax, owners, who's been on a bit of a tear. Xavier Coates, Jerome Hughes return for the Storm. Ethan Strange, the New South Wales under-19 star in origin this year, playing at centre with Seb Chris out for the Raiders. Bradman Best out for Anari Tuala coming in at left centre. Bradman Best, I had, we were looking at a few potential super pods for the podcast and he was at like 1.5% ownership. Mm. I actually had him jotted down and then uh, he's dealing with Hammy or something or other. So he's a super pod now because he'll probably be at 0% ownership. It would have been a play as well because it was, what, barely a month ago he scored a hat-trick mm. against the same team. So uh, would have been a, a good move there. But there's other options. I know some are holding Maju, you're holding Ponga and Gagai mm. and, yeah, uh, he would have been a nice one to sort of complement all of that look. Luke Thompson also returns to the NRL, returned through New Wales Cup from a, a length injury layoff. I think it was last week. So good to see him back on the bench for the Doggies. Top grade. Now, mate, let's just tuck into topics for the week. And uh, as I said, it is captains. Mm -hmm. Enormous, enormous impact this week. Look, they could all score bang on 100, bang on 150, and it could make no difference. But I suspect that won't be the case. Five players. Caelan Ponga, Nico Hines, Latrell Mitchell, Sean Johnson, Nathan Cleary. All have dream matchups. We're going to go from the top. We're going to talk about them all. And then we're going to give our verdict on what our plan is with these guys for this week. Because this, this is the big, big question. So just to clarify, mm. Timmy's put up a whole heap of numbers here. That 18% is what he's captain at. As of now? That is what he was captain of, as, yep, yep, coming into the podcast okay. at 4pm okay. at Tuesday. So let's start with the top captain as it stands, Caelan Ponga, up against the Bulldogs in Newcastle. It is an afternoon, it's a day game. He get, goes up, when I say he goes up against the poor Bulldogs edge, yep. I mean Caelan Ponga is fullback, so it doesn't really matter. In theory, left side, strong side for Caelan Ponga. So he does come up against that weird dog's edge the way I see it. He's 18% captain. I don't even know how to talk about this because they're all such good matchups. It's almost like find the bad, find the negative in them. Caelan Ponga. Yeah, it's hard to. Um, you can probably look at while I talk, but his five round average would be close to 130, 140. Uh, just some numbers on Ponga. So I think he's. Played the dog six times uh, in his career. 
for 73 points per game. So we're going back at some time now, and obviously conditions and rules have changed and such. But Only 131 five-round average. Only. That's that's not even drink water territory. <laughs> not yet. Yeah. No, it is very close. Um, but, yeah, you look at that. 137. Oh, sorry, let's go back one further. 180, like I said, that game, round 18 against the Bulldogs. <sighs> then a bye, 137. Uh, against the Tigers, then he bangs out a 96 against Melbourne when you know some probably would have looked at that game and thought, no, I might sit him this week. Um, Round nine against Parramatta, Caelan Pong was 440k. <laughs> yeah. You know, you always get these hard luck stories, you know, I should have went to this guy, I should have went to that guy. Like, I had a decision to make way back in the season. I think it was either out of Ponga or... Uh, could have even been Marju before he sort of hit that peak form. I went to Marju, it didn't turn out all bad, but... Pongo, yeah, if you got on that far in advance, you would have made 600k. You, you look at the the reasons why we wouldn't have. So it was his first game back after about six weeks out where he scored two, uh, one point in two minutes against the Tigers. Mm-hmm. He came back in round eight, scored a 58 in 53 minutes off the bench. The following week, 16 points in 80 minutes against Parramatta. I was at that game, had an absolute barry in defence. That was when he was in the halves. They then had the bye in round 10. By the end of round 11, he was 484k. And then there was Origin looming, which we all suspected he was every chance to come into. Games then against the Sharks. Then there was the Origin week. Then yep. they had the round 14 bye. So if he played Origin, would have been would have missed 13 and 14. Then came back against Brisbane, the Roosters, who we thought were a good football team at the time. Panthers. Bulldogs was a soft game. Then round 19 bye. So, like, yeah. <laughs> there were so many reasons there. So I remember I, I, remember I bought him the week I said uh, I went Marju to Ponga. And you thought it was a, a little bit sideways. I said, no, nah, look, you know, I, I didn't know if Marju would even get back in the team at that mm. point because he had his defensive uh, deficiencies. But Ponga bangs out a 77 that week. That was his first week back at fullback. Um, since then, his lowest score at playing fullback was a 47 against Penrith. So, again, we don't have the numbers up in front of us, but just looking at the average there, he'd be averaging well in advance of 100 after moving back to fullback. Yeah. So you can almost discount and discard all of those numbers there at 5 eighth for mine. I just yeah. think, look at most recent form. Absolutely. He averages 100 over the course of the season. That's Nico-like. It's better than Nico. It's probably yeah even better than Drinkwater at the moment. Yeah. I uh, said, makes the case himself with those sort of numbers, the day game, the doggies. Doggies are back to full strength, but what we have to remember with them, or close, near enough full strength after... What feels like for the first time all season, mm-hmm. we also have to remember that there are players underdone. There are so many new combinations because they haven't played together. So it's still, the matchup's still very good. Toby Sexton back as well. So that was the uh, the game when they got pumped by, was it 66 nil or something? Like, so that was the next week they, they hit the panic button. They went out and bought Sexton. So I think, like you say there, dogs will be improved on that 66. I'm not expecting that this yeah. week. He has given them a steady hand there at seven. and Coming off the bye as well, the dog. Yeah, Coming they'll be off better. Win, Coming off a win and then a bye and at full strength, like, it's, yeah. it's not bad. I'm just saying, Ponga will be a great option again this week, but don't expect that 180. Yeah, yeah. Nico Hines versus the Titans at 9% captaincy. This is among the top 10% of overall super coaches. Now, he is coming up against the Titans at Shark Park. Day game, I believe. 6pm uh, 6pm six game. So he's coming up, Nico play on the right, comes up against the left edge of the Titans, which is significantly their better defensive edge. However, Nico plays both edges. Yeah, he's like a fullback. Like, I think he got his assist both on the, the other edge last week, didn't he? Yeah, he's, a, he's that sort of Hughes style, you know, fullback turn halfback that plays both mm. sides, can float when he needs to, when he wants to. Uh, just some numbers on Nico against the Titans in his career, 76 points per game average. So look, if he gets that this week, you, as a vice captain, you're not looping that. Um, but at home, and I say home as in as a um, as a Sharks player at Shark Park, 16 games, 102 points per game. So he's Bradman. Jeez. Like he walks out, he scores 100 at, at Shark Park. So I said he's, he's been doing it against largely good teams, and mate, the big one with Nico is uh, I'll get his numbers up, but he, he's like sub. He's sub 50 percent ownership now. This is. Right. This is arguably the best player in Supercoach. That's the thing, though, when you have those options that were playing and, and playing well in Johnson and now Cleary since coming back. And I know when some went to mm. Moses around Origin time that, that have hung on to Moses. Uh, I've had a, a whole heap of questions on the um, Supercoach 365 podcast the last few weeks, and all the questions have been, you know, Nico to SJ, Nico to Cleary, Nico yeah. to someone. That's and the my question answer, every week, hasn't it been? My Nico, uh, sorry, my, my Nico. My answer to Nico <laughs> has always been no, hold Nico. 
He's the best player in the game. He has been for two and a half seasons. So, yeah. So okay. So he's sixty nine point two percent among the top ten ranked teams, which means Nathan Cleary is at eighty four point two percent. So we go down to Sean Johnston, Johnston, Sean Johnson at forty percent. Yeah. So he's still the popular, well, one of the most popular halfbacks ahead of SJ. Mm. But yeah, for me, I like. You're probably not going to captain Nico here on Friday in a Friday game, I wouldn't think. So my question then becomes, at what point is he loopable? Like, with, I don't think Ponga is getting a 180, but you can easily get a 140 or a 130. Am I going to get greedy? Am I going to double that with Nico on a Friday? Mm. Or do I just wait and hope and hope others loop and I zag when they zig or zig when they zag? I like it. I, I, I'm, I am a little bit surprised that he... Oh. That he's the second most picked, but God, it's tough. Latrell Mitchell up against the Dragons. Day game, 4.4% ownership. Doesn't really have a preferable side, Latrell. He can go either on his day. It's almost like what he prefers. You'd argue probably the left is his better one, but at the start of this season when he was going well, it was that right edge was doing a lot of damage down. Mm-hmm. My concern with Latrell is firstly the the bunnies form a little bit, but not as much that because I've said this a few weeks in a row, but just expecting a bounce back, it's just their lack of middles. They're coming up against a dragon side who, to their credit, have been pretty good the last month or so, mm-hmm. at least resilient enough. The lacking of middles concerns me for them. What are your, what's your take on Latrell? Success leaves clues with Latrell, I feel. So I'm going to take you back to uh, last year, mm. round 20. They played the Sharks away. He scored a 52. After coming back, what was the injury he had last year, Matty? He came back after a long injury. Was it uh, hamstring? Oh. Yeah, last yeah, he, year. He did his hammy. He, came, he went to America. Yeah, he did his right. hammy against the Dragons in about round five. Came back against the Eels in about round 17. You're right. Round 22 against the Dragons, he got a super coach score of 22. So there's your uh, literal uh, stats via Matty the Waterboy. <laughs> uh, but let's fast forward. So he comes back in round 16 at 99, round 17 at 93, round 18, 136. He came back firing. The Sharks managed to stop him. And why I think this is important, the next week, he didn't play at Barlow Park, So, he, but they did play at Sunshine Coast Stadium. Mm. They game against the Warriors, who defensively were probably on par with what the Dragons are this year, 152. The next oh. week, 115 against the Eels. The week after, 105 against Penrith. So out of all of that, I'm just saying, don't panic sell Latrell. I think he can go huge this week. I'm not panic selling. No, not you, but some will. Some will. Some, some will, will look at that game against the Sharks. He might look disinterested. What about panic captain? Well, I've done that the past two weeks, and it hasn't turned out for me. But that's the thing. Latrell, he's got that 100 in him. You know when he gets in that mood, when he starts smiling, the opposition are in big trouble. And that's the thing. He doesn't have the 100 in him. He's got the 170 in him. Like yeah. it, it, You know it's coming, but... Oh. And that's what makes him so enticing is that the Bunnies have had a few down weeks. The trail by his standards had a few down weeks, but he's also come back from a massive injury layoff. It just makes him all that more enticing because people will be straying away. Yeah. Sean Johnson, a player that neither of us are owners of. Now, 150 last week. When it happened, you were just going... Knowing that the majority had Nathan Cleary, that was probably not going to be the massive impact, but Nathan Cleary tunned up and you're just sitting there going, Nico... Just ton up. It doesn't yeah. have to be a big ton. Just get get like 100 on the dot and it'll offset a lot of that damage. He did. Now, this is the big run home. It's Cleary versus Latrell versus Nico and – sorry, Cleary versus Nico versus Sean Johnson and more specifically Nico versus Sean Johnson. And Sean Johnson wins round one yep. by a decent margin. 50 points. Does he keep it up against the Tigers? It is a Tigers home game being played in Hamilton, I believe, in New Zealand. 5.30 p.m. He goes... He's another one who does play sort of both edges a little bit. He's 4.5% captained at the moment. Uh, The left edge... Yeah, so both edges of the Tigers are both pretty brittle. So what's your thoughts on SJ as a captaincy option this week? So this is Saturday, 5.30 Sydney time. Yep. So we're looking at a, a night, a genuine night game in Hamilton mm. Saturday night. Good shout. Seventeen degrees and raining in Hamilton. So just take that into consideration. SJ had average about four hundred this year if it stopped raining yeah. in New Zealand. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like th- these are the things you got to think ahead, right? Particularly with your vice captain, if you're planning to vice SJ and you haven't looked, and you you know you turn on, uh, you know the TV on Saturday uh, evening and you see it's pissing down in Hamilton, yeah, and you don't have an interest in Cleary. 
or Hines who have come before him, suddenly you're playing from behind. So just con- consider that. Um, how were you feeling last Friday about 7.30, 8 o'clock, what, Johnson's banged out of 150, you've just spent the last two and a half days telling people not to buy him for Nico Hines? I know how I was feeling. It wasn't good. It's funny because it's like I'm so comfortable more often than not in my decisions. Yep. And even when that happened, I was like, I trust Nico Hines to go well and yeah. maybe not 150, obviously, but to, to bounce back and, and somewhat do it. And the, even if he was – I was thinking, all right, mate, ton, triple figures, mm-hmm. let's do that. And then we can make up the extra 50 points in the back on the run home. <laughs> but I'm sure a hell of a lot of other people who followed my advice, if yeah. there's anyone out there, weren't thinking the exact same. So – Look, I, I was very relieved when uh, when Nico did go big, but and I'll stick by it. I'll stick by it. I, I think that Nico can make up those. P- you know what? Another big part of it was that I found it to be a very sideways trade. So yeah. I, he does have to because it cost a trade to go across to him. He mm-hmm. has to beat him by you know to make it worthwhile. Would you reckon one fifty on the run home? Yeah, probably. And he's got the fixtures to do it. He does. But for me, and I can only ever speak for myself, I know you probably mm. do the same. In my situation, I couldn't do it. And again, the sample size, you've got to look at the last two and a half years, not just the last probably two months with Hines versus SJ. And uh, yeah, as I said, SJ in the race. So there was them two. Check the, the weather when it gets closer to the game day. But there is rain forecast. Now, we had that South Sydney game, torrential rain, to be fair, but 20 mm-hmm. points. Mm-hmm. And then the other real wet weather game was against, who was it there over in NZ? The Sydney Roosters, and he scored 31. So there you go. You know, <coughs> you sp- speak about making 50 points back on last week, you could make 80 points up this week. Could be so up. Swings, so will, swings it's and a, roundabouts. It's a fascinating run home, those halfbacks. Mate, the last one on our list, Nathan Cleary. Against Manly at Brookvale Oval, it is the Thursday night game. Yeah, first game of the week. 14% ownership, Thursday night curse. He goes up against that pretty ordinary defensive left edge of Manly. 14% ownership. Sorry, he's the second most skippered. Nico's third on nine. Would you go early on Cleary and just lock him in? On form, it's hard to say no, but I just think as good as Cleary is, we've seen him dominate games earlier this year. And score 50 super coach points. Mm. So I know the last couple of weeks it's translated where he's won six Dally M points and scored hundreds. But you think back as, as recent as this year, Thursday night games, round one, round two against the Broncos and Souths, f- scores of 53 and 40. So I'm not, I'm not saying that's going to happen again per se, but it's, it's every chance. And obviously, Manly, probably not as good as those two teams I just mentioned. But Thursday night, I just think as good as Cleary is, there's probably better options after him. Yeah. All right, mate. The important one. Let's let's call it an open slather and say that we own all of those players. Mm-hmm. We'll say what we, we want to do after, but to start it off, if you've got all those five players, not physically possible, but who would your captain and, and vice-captain be this week? On form and fixtures alone, I'm going to go a vice of Latrell. Just think the goal kicking fullback. He's you know he's so much shit's been said about Latrell last couple of weeks as well. Not a big game player. Um, South love playing in the day, particularly that Saturday afternoon 3 p.m. slot. I, I like the game against the Dragons. Uh, so Latrell vice captain for me, and I think anywhere 120 and above, I'd consider looping. Um, Ponga would be my captain. Yeah, okay. Do you have any... So there's my next question. So Pong will be your captain. What do you think a loopable score is this week? Let's start for people, because there was a question from Jeff Fletcher. (laughs) Right. If you have the GOAT, Sonny Luke, stuck in your team, what minimum score would you loop? So let's say Sonny comes in and gets his Mm 15-20, probably being generous. What would you need to loop with Sonny in your team? 15, you said. That'd be about his highest score of the year, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's tricky. So I, I'm, I'm a little bit different. I don't, I don't have him. My lowest score is probably going to be Blake Wilson of the Bulldogs. Um, but yeah, that. to that question, my, yeah, he'd probably be looking at a 150 at least. Agreed. I think. I think I that's probably, that's number, probably par. At least 150. Yeah, yeah at least. Because then you factor in as well that if someone else goes down early or whatever. Uh, okay, what if you, let's say you have a slightly better play. You've got a decent squad, not a lot of dead wood, and, and your, your VC, sorry, your AE would be set for 35 to 40 points. 
Yeah, that's that's like I sort of said. My gut tells me around one twenty five, one thirty ish. Like I said, I, I had this exact predicament last week. Ponga scores a one twenty against the Dolphins. I didn't loop it. Um, I captain Latrell, who got seventy one. So I'm just flipping that. It cost me forty six points in the end. So yeah, in hindsight, forty six points this time of year makes a difference. But I just think for what it's worth to have a second chance. Yeah, it's, the vice captain is so important this week. Yeah. Now, I, I would, if you say you got thirty five to forty for an AE, I'd be looking at one forty, right? just because the matchups are so good. Yeah. Now, I am leaning towards Nico Hines as captain. Early in the week. Yeah. And vice. Yeah. Would you vice? I I wouldn't. Right, just straight. Yeah. So I'd be taking that risk of not getting the is. Here but I am saying it's so important, and you're going straight well, off the bat. I've, because I build my squad up this way with yeah. depth, I've got too many players. Like, yeah, okay. I, I, I could only imagine, like, as it stands, pre trades this week, just having a look at the, the amount of players that I've got. I've got one, two, P. Kuro playing off the bench now. Right. So there's one yep. who could, I still think you get decent minutes. I really do think he gets probably 40 to 50, but one, two, three, four, five. Four players if Munro doesn't play actually now. So and that those players would be say Ramian, Ruben Garrick, who I'm looking at sitting, Pia Kura, and Blake Braley. So Pia Kura is probably the dagger there. But even so, I'm like it's not a great VC loop if, unless Pia Kura starts. Yeah, I'm just looking at your team here. You've, you're playing mm. Ramian as it is. Have you set this sort of? Uh, I have, but I will be to and fro between Ramian and Mulitalo, and there's still a looming trade pending for that. If that's the case, if you get the 24-hour mail that Munro is back in suddenly, mm. do you play him on fixtures ahead of those Sharks? Because it's tricky. Like, you you know if he catches those balls last week, he probably gets an 80, if not higher. South Sydney's middle's out yeah. concerns me. Yep. No, that's fair. Probably not. Uh, so, yeah, look, I'm leaning towards Nico Hines. Honestly, it is that tight. This could chop and change that many times between now and the weekend, but... On Tuesday night, that's where where I sit for it. My other one that, that I would lean to would if I, if I don't go with Nico Hines, I reckon I will captain Kalen Ponga and VC Nico Hines. Would hey, you would yep. you just throw <coughs> for for argument's sake on the VC on a Brian To'o oh. Thursday game? You can't vice Cleary obviously if you're captaining Hines. To oh, back to back. Oh hundreds. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. of those five, I wouldn't yeah. have one, but I'd, it'd be it'd be Brian To'o. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, Matty, of those five players mentioned, who do you think goes the biggest this week? Yeah, I know you guys like focus on what time of the week guys play and vice captain and loops and all that, but if I'm going to answer the question... And this is on, where you come in good, Matty, because yeah. <laughs> we will overlook into it. Yeah. Who wins the game the best and who goes ham? It was, it was a very easy one for me. I reckon Manly are missing both their middles. They're coming up against the best four-pack in the NRL. I reckon it's going to be... A bloodbath on Thursday. Wow. Um, yeah, I reckon. I reckon Nathan Cleary for sure. I reckon it's going to be. They're. They're. I know it's not a betting show, but their lines twenty. I'm. I reckon they'll cover it. Cover that. And yeah, I reckon Cleary's going to go the best of all of them. Oh, you better believe it's a betting show, mate. Brought to you by Better. <laughs> Just on that. Wow. So Cleary's top score this year is 158. Guess who that came against? I'm going to go with Manly. Correct. So there you go. So. Yeah, what did we say? Successfully Shit. excludes. There it's, it a, is. it's such a good week of yeah. Super Coach. Strap yourself in, I reckon, because it's going to get like back end of the week. There's going to be some decisions to be made. Oh, exciting, Brennan. As I said, with the VC loop kind of out of play for P. Kerr is a dagger. Could have had it anyway. Trade him. On. Can you trade him a week early? Like, is that almost enough for you to consider getting him a week early and just foregoing a bit of cash? Uh, the fact he's we'll get to it. Bench. We'll get to it soon, but yeah. right. so sit, because sit, sit just because I there's no one I really want this week. Okay, cool. I'm super happy with my 17 I've got, and I've got terrific matchups this week around the five games we just mentioned. So I'm just like I don't want to really burn a trade to do it, but yeah. I see it. I see it. Now, what have I done here? I know. As you know, guys. Paddy and George from Mortgage Choice SCW can help with a number of different things from wedding finance to debt consolidation. One of their biggest services, though, is education, especially when it comes to 
first home buyers looking to get into the marketplace. The boys have let me know that with the new financial year coming into play, that the government has released a heap of new incentives to make it so much easier for first home buyers to actually buy into their first place. If you want to know more about these and how much you can borrow in general, go and speak to them. Usually it'd sing you $129, but if you mention SC Playbook, it's completely free of charge. Uh, not for personal interest, but for podcast interest. I did have a chat to the boys during the week about the incentives, and they're unreal. So they're they're trying to get first home buyers into the market. So if you are in that position, have a listen, go and speak to them. If you want to reach out to them, you can flick them a message on Instagram at Pat and George underscore SCW, or call them on o two nine five two one one six one one. Speaking of oh, testy pop, there you go. There you go. On cue. Speaking of education, the boys' new podcast, That'll Teacher, is now officially up and running. Latest episode on Super Secrets came out on Thursday. Speaking with a financial planner, I know the fella, very, very clever man. All things superannuation, especially what to do if you're self-employed, how you can create and grow your wealth, how to make sure you're financially protected and keep what's in your safe, safe. Look them up on Apple, Spotify and all streaming platforms, plus TikTok and Instagram, That'll Teacher. Now, mate, hot topics for the week. We've spoken about plenty uh, of the big, big names this week. Brian Toto, 746K, on a tear, a bloke I've had since round one, and he was rock solid all year, but I was missing out on some big scores, particularly probably Greg Marge, who was one that I for, mm-hmm. for went to, to hold on to Toto. He's starting to repay the faith the last month or so. A bloke you'd be looking to bring in or not? Yeah, definitely. If you don't own him, I think the, the fixtures on paper for Penrith, they're not ideal. And the only thing I'd say with Toto is be wary of that round 27 resting. Concerning, yeah. Like if they're in a position to rest, they did it last year, proofs in the pudding. So you might get one less game out of Toto than you would someone else. And they've shown a huge willingness to rest players already this year. And he's due one, right? Like he had a big mm. origin campaign. I think he, 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 had a, he might have had one or maybe two that middle part of the year, but... His game style, it lends itself to having a freshen up before the finals. Yep. Uh, so, correct. Look at your depth. I think he's a great buy this week, but if you think you're a bit skinny on depth, and particularly you look at that round 27, you might earn a few, a few Eels players there as well who will be on the buy. Probably not worth risking it for that reason alone. Number four, Jermaine Asako. The man is on a tear, $582,000. <laughs> Mate, I think... 60% of his owners sat him outside the 17 last week, 40% played. Yep. Tough watch. That They're the kind of things that will happen at this time of year, though, because squads have got depth and Sipay starts. They're tough. This week in particular, there's going to be some big scores that sit outside your 17. Yeah, what have they got? The Roosters back at Allianz. So, yeah, they're going to be excited to be mm. back on their home deck. I know they've been across the road, but... Uh, just on Osako, why they would have sat him last week. So 124, and you think, why would I sit that? But then... His last ton, in fact, his last score over 70 was way back in round 14. So we're going back 10 weeks. Um, but, yeah, that's the thing, right? People bring in chance, he goes down, you sit a sarco, he tons up. Like, sometimes you can't win. Against the Knights, who had been on a tear, I think we mentioned it last week, but they had, up to that point, the fifth best defensive record in the NRL. There was plenty of reasons why. So don't, don't kick your heels too much, uh, but that would have been a tough watch. Joey Manu. He was one of the more sold last week. Eighth most purchased this week, 667K. Swallowing your pride was the uh, the subject of last week's podcast. Would you get him back in this week at 667K? No, I couldn't do it. Um, and not just because, like, looking this week alone, you'd say maybe, but if you've just sold him or if you're not holding him, it's a, yeah, that's probably a different, different conversation. If I've just sold him, I'm not bringing him back. Um, game this week against the Dolphins and then the Eels, the Tigers, the Bunnies. So he's sort of someone you can bank on for a solidish score. Like his average is around 65, mm. 70. Never seems to get too much in that span, though. It's either 100 or 50 or, you yeah. know. So it's a tricky one with barring, Marnie. Barring fullback, as we know. Yeah, it's a tricky one with Marnie. I feel like you, you miss out that score last week, 97. He gets in that mood where he runs, he's tacking, you know, br- breaking tackles and Very offloading. moody man, Joey Marnie, on the field, isn't he? When he yeah. wants to... I don't want to make him sound bad, but when he wants to be on one, he's on one. You see him, he roams and he just goes bonk. Because then there's some nights where he's happy just to sit on his edge. And maybe it's instructions from Trent Robinson. I'd almost look at, and if you're going the pod route, <coughs> Suli'i. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just moved him. For the same price. He's been playing well. Mm. Uh, what's his price, Suli? Uh, I'll have a look. Just because he's been banging out 70s. I love him back on yeah. the wing. Um, again, like I say, the Dolphins, they have a decent game against the Tigers in a couple of weeks' time. Like, he's going to be a pod player. He wouldn't be a highly owned player this time of year, I wouldn't think. But 532, very affordable. Yep. 
and scores the last couple of weeks, yeah, take the good with the bad. He's got a couple of 80s amongst mm. some 30s and 40s. But if you do think that Manu's going to go well, generally I would I would lean with the goal-kicking option in Suli. Yeah, I, I think if you wanted to get Joey Manu at 67K, I'd one up and go the ninth most traded-in player, and that's Dallin Wateni Zalesniak at 665K. Yep. I think he's a better option than Joey Manu. I'm a very happy Manu owner, but... He could easily go 40 this week. So, mate, I think Dallin, the ninth most. We mentioned the, the concerns with no chance being there, but I think he's a good buy with that run still and, and a bloke that I'm eyeing off. Mm-hmm. Definitely, yeah. Probably not too much more to say than what we've yep. already said with Dallin. Jaden Campbell, 12th most. Bit of chat that Brimo might miss the remainder of the season. Jaden Campbell, 459K. Had a lot of questions about him. What are your thoughts? Uh, I have to have a look at their that their buy. I, they've got a tough draw on the sorry, run home. Not their buy, their draw. Yeah, yeah. They've got a tough run home. I had a look at his eighty minutes games this season, and they were up and down, mate. I I think there's far better buys. I wouldn't be diving into it. He's fullback only, so you know you're gonna have to shift yeah. someone. There's plenty of fullbacks out there. And just lastly, a bloke that uh, so I brought in Howth last week. You know when you go into that little that super coach vortex of trade and you're going down every avenue you can and you just miss all the diet super coaches know yep. and you just miss the most obvious things. Tell me. You know how I, I mentioned time, all the time about how I, I don't like the enough option. I was looking at blokes that I could bring in in the second row, ideally having jewel that could present as a decent number for me. And I looked for ages and went through all my options. Looked at CT Dub as well. And I went, yes, I found it. And I was like, it sounds ridiculous, but yeah. I saw Carl Lawton and right. it's ridiculous, I know, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Matt Lodge had done his ACL the night before. Right. And I knew they had no middles. They had Aloi, Paseca, a few of them gone for the season. I'm like, he's going to come in. He's, uh, he's a bottom dollar. I don't even have to play him, but he was dual position. And I'm like, he could be the goer. And then I'm like... Play, he locked out last night. This doesn't work. Yeah, okay. Back to the drawing board. And a bloke that I did see, I didn't go with, but especially with Seb, Chris out now, not a bloke I'd be happy with in my team, but if you have no depth in your side and you're freeing up money this week, Nick Kotrick, 13th most traded in. He is bottom dollar. Terrible scores last week. <clears throat> Look, I wouldn't recommend him as a buy, but if you've got shit depth and you're freeing up money this week, at least he's a playable person in your team. Yeah, when you said you went down the vault, I thought you went back to 2018 to pull out Nick Kotrick because that's when he <laughs> yeah. was of some sort of relevance. That was the last time he scored double figures. Yeah, and <clears throat> that's the thing. He was sort of that tearaway talent back then. When mm. I think he led the league in tackle bus ahead of you know Teddy and Noffa and those types. So 200K, I never thought I'd see that. No, no. This, at this point of his career for Nick Kotrick. He was a beast. Yeah, he was. One, Most, of, one of Matty's favourites. Ma- yeah, Matty. <laughs> Most traded out player. Number four, Scott Drinkwater, 951K. Two ways to look at this, head-to-head and overall. Head-to-head, I understand it. You've got a key fullback position and there are fullbacks with great matchups this week. He's a ton of cash. He has the buy this week. Mm -hmm. I can understand the sell. Overall, I'd be sticking strong for the rest of the season. I also look at, I'm half eyeing. I own four or five bunnies. Round 26 when the bunnies have the buy, they, I'll need to shed probably at least one of my bunnies, depending how the rest of the squad shapes up and who's in and who's out. Mm-hmm. I don't mind the sneaky discounted Scott Drinkwater for Latrell. The Cowboys have the Panthers in round 27, which sounds horrible, but if they mass rest, it becomes a decent matchup. This week, though, head to head overall, hold sell. Head to head, I think you've nailed it. You're selling um, overall. I actually like those three fixtures for them. Mm. Sharks back at home, like in Townsville, and then they have the Dolphins at Suncorp. I just think, yeah, the Cowboys thrive. They're going to have to start like winning again if they're going to make finals. So he's going to be instrumental. I think Penrith rests around 27. So I'm they could you. be up a New South Wales Cup Panthers side to end your uh, Supercoach year. Yeah, sneaky round 26 by, hopefully around about, his break even's like 170 or 180. So it could be about 850K with a bit of luck, even less if he has a stinker. Number eight, Ruben Garrick, 612K. We spoke about him a lot last week. Firstly, would you look to sell? Secondly, I'm going to sit him outside my 17 this week against Penrith. Yeah, I think I've read somewhere he scores against Penrith most recently. His last three games have been about you know less than 10 and a couple of 30s. Uh, he obviously had the HIA, I think it was earlier this year. Yeah. So unfortunate. Uh, like I sort of said, he's, he's almost in that Manu bracket. He has the ceiling, but on a bad day, he scores a 60. So I'm not selling him this week. 
No, I may not play him though. It's a good point. Yeah, I'm definitely not playing him. There, there have been games in the last month where I've reluctantly played players against Penrith and they score like 30. I'm just like, how many years of dominance <laughs> and stunning super scores do you have to have before yeah. you don't play? It doesn't matter who it is. At what point do you learn that Penrith's yeah. not yeah. going to concede so tries? this way, you've not a chance I'm playing him. Watch him get 120. Uh, mate, trades and skippers for the week. We've spoken about our skippers. Uh, what are your trades? You, you mentioned maybe Tino. Perhaps Tino, but that would leave me with no trades. So, look, it's probably not worth it on the basis of uh, running the gauntlet for the next month. Mm. Um, if I was going to do it, like I said, I'd go Johnny Bateman and Christian Welch out. This sells out a necessity to get the funds. Um, I think I said a couple of times here and elsewhere that I never bought Buller this year. It's sort of been the sliding doors moment that's cost me 500k. So, money's tight, trades are tight. That in mind, it's, it's probably not a necessary trade to make this week. I don't think head to head's different because it's finals. Yep. You look to make moves. I don't really think it's an overall trade week just because because of the games that are in front of us. I, I don't imagine there'd be too many sides struggling to field a decent seventeen. Yeah. Like I know myself, I'm I'm benching some really high upside CT dubs. The trade I was eyeing off last week and I knew it was going to be tight. I mentioned that I needed Ramian to go decent and Dallin not to go too big. I can make that trade. I scraped in by two and a half thousand dollars. That's luck. That's yeah. luck. So keen to get your thought, thoughts, mate. And like Ramian's got a great matchup this week against the Titans. Dallin also has a, a good matchup for the Warriors. But with three trades left, the I've got depth across the squad. My front row backup is a little shaky though. I'm thinking it's a no trade week it, it, with with the the respective break ends of Ramian and Dallin, mm-hmm. and with the new fullback coming in, Torpiki. I think I'm just going to sit on my hands this week, and I should be able to make that trade next week when the Sharks' run does toughen up again. Yeah, you're in a position to be able to sit back and mm-hmm. watch it unfold. Um, yeah, I'm just looking here at the Sharks, and I'm looking at Mulatalo, not Ramian, but it looks like uh, Ronaldo's never played the Gold Coast, so. <laughs> That's just an oddity. But I, don't, I was just going to say, like, how does Ramian stack up historically against the Titans? Um, we could be looking down the, that vault too far. But. I think edges and whatnot uh, and history against the Titans is skewed just because of Kieran Foran's impact on the left edge yeah, this okay. year. Both yeah, makes sense. in attack, but even more so in defence. Yep. So I think that should, I can look at this year, though. Muli is the one going up against the soft Titans. I think I'm going to back my gut. And if Muli Talo does play as named, I think I'll play him over Ramian and Munro. Yeah. I think all things considered, uh, Ronaldo would be my pick ahead of those two. Mm. Just, just a little bit of like uncertainty around Ronaldo. Like he missed the game a fortnight ago with uh, a training yeah. mishap. What, why did he miss it? Jaw. Jaw? He hurt his jaw. I think it might have been at training. I don't know if it was definitely training. That's what I heard though. And then, yeah, it was named to play last week and laid out. Is it, yeah, not to throw the conspiracy theories out there, but is there something more to it, do you think? Or is it genuinely a draw? Because why not report it as a draw if maybe concussion? I don't, I don't know. It just seems, that's the thing though, like, and then Herodi comes in, like it's, yeah. I don't know, maybe just a, a weird one. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, looking at, if he does play, probably play Mulitalo, but few options. He there. plays, he scores a double. Yeah, 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 you've said it. So <laughs> I've got someone to blame if he doesn't. Yeah. Uh, guys, the SC Paper Podcast, obviously partnering with Better for this season, producing markets of our own. Last week, Nico and Latrell combined for 130 plus fantasy points. They got there. Campbell Graham did not score. Six dollars was paying. Would have been a fill up. This week, Kalen Ponga, 75 plus official NRL fantasy points into an Anari Tuala try at five dollars fifty. Now that was Bradman best. We had some breaking news just before the podcast that he was out. So he's been flipped to Tuala. The kind folk at Better have gone and changed that around for us. Just on the left edge, it's humming, mate. So no, Tuala. Link to that market will be in the YouTube description and across our socials this week. If you're interested, please use those links as it lets Better know that we sent you. What's gambling really costing you for free and confidential support? Call 1-800-858-858 or visit gamblinghelponline.org.au. Now, mate, a few questions before we wrap up the podcast for this week. Alex Wallace, Brian Toto or Dane Gagai? I need to bring in one of them. Who's your pick? Uh, I'm going to go with Dane Gagai just because fixtures. And the, and like I said, we talk, oh, he might rest that yeah. last week. Exact same, mate. I think Gagai has to play there. 
How many trades does the spy have left? This is from the Super Coach Sponge. How many sp- trades does the spy have left? He's been off for a few weeks, and is Clem Custody catch him, or does she need to do a Tonya Harding? The spy's reply to that was that he's got three in the bank and rolling three into next week as well, he reckons. So he says, Clem's in trouble. Those two, at this stage, will both be on next week's pod, so there's going to be some fire thrown on that one. Question from the kind folk at Supercoach Fanatics. Hi, guys. Three trades left. Dylan Edwards a trade out. Surprisingly, a lot of questions around Dylan Edwards this week. I didn't realise so many people owned him. Only $17,000 in the bank, though. Can't afford another sub-30 score this week due to a head-to-head sudden death. So... Firstly, is Dylan able to sell if you've got cash to do so? Secondly, Supercoach Fanatics crew, 17k in the bank. There's not a lot you can go to. Yeah, not much wiggle room there. So if you're doing that, uh, Dylan Edwards price, top of my head, probably is what, 700k? Mate, he's like 530k, I think. Okay. He's had a few stinkers. Dropped a heap. Last time I looked, he was about pushing close to a mil. Yeah, there's people you'd prefer this week, but 533, yeah. yeah. But it's a great matchup. It is, yeah. but... That's the thing, though. Like, how many Penrith Panthers can score hundreds this week? You've yeah. probably already got Cleary down for one. To- oh, a chance. Um, Crichton back in the left side. I like outside Luai, who's scoring tries as well. Like, yeah. Someone has to go hungry Sonny this Luke week. play 100 seconds. He won't score 100 points. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, what was the question? Dill Edwards a sell? Probably. Probably. Yeah, and look, he's got three trades left, so... I think there's play there. Downgrade one, get some cash in the bank, upgrade Dill to whichever gun fullback you don't have. Or via the jewels, maybe you might be able to sneak down a Garrick or a Dallin if you're holding. Yeah, you money an issue. Yeah. Reese Walsh in a bit of doubt, but provided he does take the field against the Eels, he's a cut price option that can come in, so I think that's a good trade. Cool. Uh, Matty Broom, which one to bench out of Tarpane, Horsburgh, Torhu, or Nikara? Who you got there? Right, who do the Raiders have this week? I should know this. Uh, Raiders have got the storm in Melbourne. Oh, yeah. Uh, sh- 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 probably go... I'm going to go Tohu. Only because, you know, they seem to split the super coach output. He and AFB. Um, Tohu's always solid, but this time of year I'm looking upside. Osborne's solid. Tarpane's solid. Nikara could score. So Tohu maybe just. I'd go Tohu as well. And Tohu... He would have scored about 78 or something last week with that late try on the yeah. line break. So it did rescue him. I said minutes are all over the shop. And he was strapped. His entire body was strapped last week. So early showering coming if they put a score on. Mm-hmm. I will note that with Nikara, he is running at four and for feeder. Pretty resolute defensively. So not a great match up there for him, but even so. How nice. many times have we seen him this year on the wing? Floating like randomly on that right <laughs> wing. Picking up line breaks. Yeah, just... Finds a way to find a 70 every week, so, yeah. Question from Nikara himself. Not the Briton, but Nikara someone. Just says up the wires. No context, doesn't mean anything, but up the wires indeed. Nicholas Billeris talk me out of Matt Burton with dogs full strength, the ultimate pod at 5'8". I'll, talk, I'll talk you out of Matt Burton. I, I traded him in as a trade-in in draft uh, for Joey Manu, coincidentally. I was a bit off Manu. There was a bit of a stench there around the way the Roosters were playing and Manu back to the centres. I wasn't sure. I looked up at Burton. Uh, yeah, anyway. Sad story. <laughs> Sad story, but learn from my lesson. No. no. If the tears coming down his face aren't yeah. enough to talk about Matt Burton. Yeah, look like. Yeah. <laughs> draw, draw them on. Matt Burton's super coach year is coming, but it is not this year. He's going to break out one yeah. year and average 80, but it's... It's not this year. Could be next year. Like, he could, could be, be the one. Like, yeah. like I sort of said at the top with Drinkwater, I saw something I liked. I've seen – we've seen it with Burton, yeah. but not this year, maybe when the dogs have a He could be a more serious cattle. round one cut price buy next year. Fingers crossed. Uh, mate, let's wrap that up for the podcast this week. Supercoach 365. The listeners out there that sat there and went, how good's this bloke? Where can they find you? Yeah, uh, if you haven't already jumped on at Supercoach 365, you'll get us Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We probably do our best work on Instagram uh, and on the YouTube as well. Yeah. I don't know if why that's the case, but I just, I don't know, maybe it's because I enjoy it more, uh, put a little bit more time and effort into it. But yeah, <laughs> there on YouTube as well. Um, I've sacked threads. I'm off it. So yeah. you won't find us there. It's just, yeah, everywhere else you'll get us. I Not did, threads. I haven't even started on it, so yeah. I'll take note of that. <laughs> yeah. Take my advice. <laughs> threads are on the uh, trade out block this week. Righto, guys. Uh, take that note. Threads are a no-go. And good luck in week two of head-to-head finals, NRL Supercoach 24.